So today we will be reading Shishri Radharasa Sudanidi, verse number 71. <clears throat> the crown jewel of woman who enchants the jewel of Raja, Krishna, with even the slightest love awakening moment, movement of her eyebrows. Who is the only wish yielding touchstone for her devotees? Who is like a gem from which a stream of nectar, very blissful love rasa flows? And whose effulgence outshines Millions of lightning whites appears on the outskirts of the conscious of Rindam. The crown jewel of woman who enchants the jewel of Raja, Krishna, with even the slightest Love awakening, movement of her eyebrows. Who is the only wish yielding touchstone for her devotees? Who is like a gem from which a stream of nectarian very blissful love rasa flows and whose effulgence outshines millions of lightning whites appears on the outskirts of the kunjas of Vrindavana. I see Gurudev now, and if Radha Radha Gurudev, and if it's possible to put him in a big screen so that we have direct darshan of our beloved Gurudev. Okay. Radha Radha Gurudev, Kapi Ejan Mashtam, Radhashtami, sorry. <laughs> okay. May, would you read, please, one more time, verse? <laughs> the crown jewel of woman who enchants the jewel of Raja, Krishna, with even the slightest love-awakening movement of her eyebrows, who is the only wish yielding touchstone for her devotees, who is like a gem from which a stream of nectarian, very blissful love rasa flows, and whose effulgence outshines millions of lightning whites, a 
appears on the outskirts of the Kunjas of Vrindavana. Radhe. So, in the beginning of the verse, it is said, first Radha, then Krishna. And this is the way of worshipping of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas who really understood final conclusion of the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and six Goswamis, especially Rupa, Raghunatha and Sanatana. So here Prabhupada Saraswati, like a maidservant of Srimati Radharani, he is always focused on first on Radha and then on her beloved Krishna. And he is glorifying Srimati Radharani by saying she is the crown jewel of all women. So, the word in Sanskrit is here, Ramani Chudaman, Chudaman, crown, jewel, money of all women. And he wants, in that way, he wants to clarify the position of Srimati Radharani that all other women's and forms of girls which are appearing in different pastimes, not only in Vrindavan, are the different kinds of expansions of Srimati Radharani. And she is a crown jewel because no one can compare with her beauty, with her sweetness, with her qualities, and very expert, artful plays, lilas, in which she, in which she so expertly is giving pleasure to Vraja Mani the jewel of Raja, Krishna. So she is the crown jewel of all lady lovers and he is the jewel of all men's. So their loving relationship, their exchange of love, is the subject for the meditation for very, very sincere devotees. And Prabhupada Saraswati is saying here, the crown jewel of women, this is my Swamini, this is my Ishtadev. And I know her position in Vrindavan, that she is a chanting Vrajamani, jewel of Raja. So from this just two words, Vrajamani and Chudamani, all Siddhantas and all Rasas are actually include devotees who who relishing the rasa like radharani's maid servants when they hear these two words radhika chudamani and vrajamani they immediately drown in lila smarana of their loving pastimes immediately they don't have to read the books, they don't have to 
do all other sadhanas, but with all their hearts, they are relishing the sweetness of Yuga Lakishore. So devotees who belong to the Radhika's side, like her manjaris, maidservants, are always praising and glorifying first Radharani and then Krishna. Krishna's devotees, they are glorifying first Krishna and other devotees. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Reveal this top secret, the essence, quintessence of all secrets, actually, that by becoming the maidservant of Shimata Radharani, Jiva can attain the last limit of its existence. So, this is the greatest gift. And these books, which we are reading and listening and meditating, remembering on them, are result of this Gora Kripa and also Rasik Vaishnava Kripa. And then we will understand that these books are not different from Chudamani Radha and Vrajamani. And these books are real gems, because the words of our Acharyas are also gems, so valuable. And maybe sometimes we have to take many years, or maybe many lifetimes, to really appreciate this kind of gift this kind of jewels. Tarunji. Also, <clears throat> if I may, <laughs> um, also the last sentence uh, Rasa Lila was just, um, Rasa Mai, sorry, was just uh, reading such beautiful um, moment, such wonderful, wonderful moment. Um, and again, like you said, my dear brother, <clears throat> without the mercy, mercy of Mahaprabhu, we could not even think about such a wonderful scenery when it said that she appears at the outskirts of the Nikuncha. So nobody before Mahaprabhu knew this kind of intimate lilas. There was not really Parakia Bhav. So this is this is very, very secret. So Radhika appears in the in the night, either it's full moon or not full moon, but she appears on the outskirts of the Nikuncha. So this is only available now by the great, great mercy of Mahaprabhu that we can now be in this mood and in, in this emotion that who is waiting for Swamini when she appears at the outskirts of, of the Nikuncha's? It is Krishna and the manjaris and us then, of course, in our beloved and what we are longing for, in our position, we can be with her when she appears in these outskirts. And this, is, this was never ever given before. And this is such a big, big treasure that we can meditate. Just think about this, that five, six hundred years ago, ago, nobody could imagine the outskirts of the Nikunchas because they didn't know that or that it was not familiar that Radhika and Krishna were meeting in the night, in the nighttime, forbiddenly in these Nikunchas. And the Manjaris, they have full access, full access. Not even Lalita and Vishaka can and will be there. So we are extremely fortunate to be able to, like, like my dear brother said, when we are sitting down and reading this line, we can be, we can meditate about this scenery and we can think about that we are with Radhika and she is appearing in this beautiful, beautiful Nikunchas. Thank you, Taranji. So, this is the most precious gem which we have by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all Gora Bhakta Vrinda who really understood the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.
Gurudev, you want to share something? Please don't leave us alone. Okay. We surrender. Sri Radha, the only wish yielding touchstone of her devotees. One may ask here the flashes of a lightning wine hurts the eyes, and if the aura of Radhika's limbs shines like millions of lightning wines. Then what will happen with our eyes? The answer is Sandarandana Rasamrita Srava Mani. She is also a gem that emits streams a very blissful nectarian rasa. The light that emanates from her is very pleasant, like nectar. So why is like that? Why Radharani is a fulgence, indescribable, Strong light is so powerful because this is the light and the fulgence of personification of Mahabhav. Radhika is possessor of Mahabhav, the most sublime kind of prema the highest kind of prem. And it's completely natural that her effulgence of all her appearance conquered the millions, millions of lightnings. Because the nature of love is to be effulgent. Even in our daily life, we can see when some person is in love, especially in the beginning of the love, he has bright aura. And friends, parents, neighbors, they can immediately notice this change and say, something is happening with you. Your eyes are pretty shine. Your face is always full of smile and it's always effulgent. You must fall in love. And even if the person tried to hide it, it's not possible. Because the light of love is so powerful that no one can stop it. No one. And Baba is giving here beautiful example. And he's saying the light of the lightning, these strikes, can hurt the eyes. And generally speaking, strong light is very dangerous for the eye, especially when appear immediately. It's very aggressive appearance, can damage the mind, can damage the brain, can damage the eyes, you know. But this is not the case of Prema Mayirada. Actually, this is completely opposite. The more light she is emanating, the more nectar is spreading everywhere. Cooling nectar. For Krishna to cool 
down his senses, which are burning, to meet with her, his beloved. This brilliance, this effulgence is cooling down also manjaris, who are also in anxiety in burning desires to be with Swamini. It's cooling down all Vrindavan, and it's cooling down all worlds. It said three worlds. So we can see here that material love, material light, doesn't have the same effect like a spiritual pure love and person who is personification of, of that pure spiritual love. So devotees are hankering, burning from desires and eagerness to be enlightened directly from Swamini, but also to be enlightened through her maidservants. And to be lightened means actually that pure love starts to appear in the heart of devotee. Soul is awakening Jiv Jago and continues to grow because this light <coughs> of love is nourishing and nourishing devotee's heart. Tarunji. There's yes. also one more quality, like you said, the uh, Falsans, the Acharyas, especially Raghunadas Goswami and Rupa, uh, Prabhudananda Saraswati Thakur, they oftentimes compare and say that the Falsans of Swamini and of Krishna, they are so bright, but they don't hurt the eyes, especially the Falsans, the Lavanya of Swamini cannot, cannot hurt the eyes because there is one more very important quality or in this Mahabhav, in this love, like you said, the shining love can never hurt the eyes. And there is one more deep uh, ingredient in that, in that love, and that is Karuna, the compassion. So, so in the, I think in, I think either it's in <clears throat> Labha or other Rasa Sudhanidhi, but the different Lavanyas, the essence of, of this, the essence of that, and Lavanya, the, the uh, effulgence of Swamini, it can never hurt the eyes because it is completely, um, to, uh, uh, it's completely made of Mahabhav and also of this wonderful, wonderful compassion upon the the souls, which then finds its culmination, of course, in Mahaprabhu's appearance. But this compassion, it can never hurt the eyes. So this 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 two together, this love, like you said, plus, plus uh, in addition the com uh, the compassion. It's completely different than the horrible lightning strikes and the horrible LED, like very, very bright light, cold light. So this is the material light, but spiritual light is always, like you said, pleasing. And the, the, the compassion is there for, for us. And even there in the spiritual world for her manjaris, the compassion is always a big, big ingredient. Sorry. <laughs> You just remember in Chaitanya Charitamrita, these three kinds of Abhishek, which Radhika is always bathing. So devotees who are very close to Radharani and identify themselves like Radha Dasis, when they are doing Abhishek, they are um, meditate that Radhika is bathing all the time, 24-7, all the time in her compassion, her youthfulness, her, uh, her elegance, actually in the light. Light is something of Mahabhava which is bathing constantly Shimata Radharani. And the light from the hearts of her maidservants are also constantly, 24-7, not only one day, one hour, two hours, is doing Abhishek to beloved Swamini. So Radhashtami, for devotees who are very attached to Shimata Radharani, 
and who see themselves like maid servants of Sri Radhika. Radharsan is every day. It's not only one day, and tomorrow is who knows which kind of day. Every day. Oh, well, this is the beauty of relationship between devotee and her, his Ishtadev. So, thank you, Tarunji. That light that emanates from her is very pleasant, like nectar. Srila Rupa Goswami has written in Ujvala Nilamani. Seeing Shirada from afar, Lalita tells her girlfriends, Look, friends, look. Radhika keeps her lotus-like feet on top of sandstones that are as sharp as swords and that have become as hot as fire because of the midsummer sun shining on it. They feel to her as soft as blue indivara lotuses and she feels very happy to see the prince of cowherders, Krishna, standing on that mountain. We can see here how Lalita, Gopi, Saki, of Shimata Radharani, she is glorifying also the power of Radharani's love. And she is very honest. And by giving this example, how Radhika is going on Abhisar, and she doesn't consider any obstacles on her path, she is actually saying she is real crown jewel of all of us. No one can compare, no one of us can compare with her. So this is the words of Radhika's best Sakis. How they also glorify. And it's showing that actually in Vrindavan, in his own specific way, everyone is glorifying Shimata Radharani. It doesn't matter in which kind of bhava. Yashoda is also glorifying Shimata Radharani. She cannot resist. And she is relishing Radharani's sweetness and beauty. And in some places, it's said that she loves Radhika sometimes even more than Krishna. So, everyone in Vraja, especially in Vraja, is in love, more or less, with Sri Radhika. And everyone in Vraja depends on this Hladini Shakti, Mahabal, which is illuminating all, all Vraja. Now it's commentary on specific points of these words. <laughs> Srila Vishnavata Chakravarti Pad comments on this verse that Radhika did not feel any pain from the hot and sharp stones but just as a sleeping person feels no pain while he's being bitten by mosquitoes. 
He can see the bites on his body when he awakens. The Sakis should have seen the blisters on Radhika's foot soles afterwards. So Vishnu Chakri Thakur is commenting these words and is saying that Radhika doesn't feel a pain because of sharp and hot stones, different pebbles on the path, different obstacles on the path to meet the Mohan. She doesn't feel it because she is full of anurag, passionate love. Tarunji, Sura Tarangidi. Everything, this passionate love to please the Krishna is going all, is removing all obstacles and it's not aware about these obstacles. So Radhika's here is teaching us also what does it mean to take the shelter of real pure love? Also, I think it, 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 uh, it is a material example, but I heard it also that the Anurag in Radhika's heart makes her temperature so hot and so passionate that, that she, she, her body, her spiritual body is hot and the stones are hot. So sometimes she doesn't feel the hotness of the stones because she herself is so much full of passion that this hotness from the stones is just ridiculous for her. So this is also a Rasik explanation. I don't know where it, I read it, but it's also said that the temperature of Swamini when she's in Anurag is very high. I mean, of course, we only think about with our material mind. We would say she has a fever, but the spiritual world is different. And, and the, 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 the difference between the hot stones and her own temperature of her soft spiritual body is, is nothing. So she can easily tolerate because she feels so much love and passion for, the, for Krishna. And separation also. Because when she touched with her lotus feet some stones, step on that, sometimes these stones are melting. Isn't it? They are melting because of Anuraga in combination, mixed with uh, separation, burning separation. So, like you said, my dear. It's such a strong fire in Radhika's all ex existence. Also, also the softness is interesting because you can only hurt yourself. You know when you when you have when when your when your skin is tight and and you know when when it's really like in the human body when it's really compressed and tight, then a sharp object it can poke you and can hurt you. But Swamini's feet, our lotus feet, are so soft. That the stones, they it will not hurt it. It will not hurt her because she, the softness of her feet will in, enwrap the stones, and there is no tension in her skin, so to say. So it's impossible that she feels any hurt because she, she's she's the embodiment of sweetness and softness. So there are so many examples when when we hear that uh, the mantris are, are massaging Swamini's lotus feet. Sometimes it's said they are like cotton. They are so soft that everything is like you. You you think yourself, oh my God, how I cannot hurt her when I massage her. So the stones cannot hurt a soft skin and a sweet soft skin. Other than our skin, it can hurt very easily. But Radhika's soft skin, it will not be hurt because she is full of softness and and sweetness. Mahabala Swarupini Radhe Takurani. This. This miracle, and this is the uh, thing which we we should meditate on it deeply, smaran practice, hoping that some softness from Radhika's lotus feet will also make our hearts soft and our wild minds to make a softness, because there is no no other solution. Only the softness of Radhika's lotus feet can melt. Krishna's heart, and what to say about our hearts. 
Yes. And Baba is giving here a very nice example, like uh, Rasmi was reading. It's like a sleeping person who, where, where is it? Who feels no pain when he is bitten by mosquito. So Radhika is not aware about any obstacle. He, she has only one goal, one point. And we also, if we have one pointed goal, fixed, without any diversions, left and right, up and down, then all obstacles which are coming, and they are coming, of course, they will come in our life, will not, will not stop this current of desire to attain our desirable goal. We should have a shraddha for that. We need that faith. We need that faith. Mm -hmm. Because because Radhika's foot soles are as light and soft as cotton wool, and cotton wool cannot be damaged even by a sharp sword. One may then argue that a sharp sword may not damage cotton wool, but fire can. And the sandstones that Radhika stood on were as hot as fire. The answer is given in this verse of Radha Rasa Suvanini. Her feet emit streams of very blissful nectarian rasa and nectar possesses the qualities of coolness. This is why the burning sunstones felt to Radhika as if they were blue indivara lotus flowers. What One more. Mm -hmm. the, answer? Yeah. the answer is given in this verse of Radha Rasa Suvanidhi. Her feet emit streams of very blissful nectarian rasa, and the nectar possesses the qualities of coolness. So what is what does it mean? Streams of very Blissful Nectarian Rasa, which Radhika's feet are constantly emanate. Gurudev, do you want to help us? Her feet emanate streams of very blissful Nectarian Rasa. Which kind of rasa is good? What's going on here? I don't understand anything. I say I think it's safe to say that maybe Gurudev after finishing, maybe he can enlighten us. Um, we cannot imagine or we cannot understand it with our material 
functioning mind there is nothing emanating like like a shower you know it's it's um i think it is very very yeah how to say you need you need these eyes which are solved with the love with the spiritual love you need this divya kyan this divya this divine vision and even then i don't think that we can yeah we can imagine what comes out of her feet i think it is a very very subtle subtle energy coming out and and in this is going directly into the hearts of those who are there so this is a very always it's said that you know you should touch the feet of the vaishnavas but we don't see anything emanating so emanating can also mean like wi-fi is emanating so the emanation which is coming out it will not be visible it will go directly into the heart of those who are there and of those like i heard many times when people massage feet of my gurudev and of sadhu maharaj that this emanation there was nothing coming out of the feet but actually it went directly into the heart of those who massaged those feet so so this emanation is a very very powerful force which we, we can compare to a speed, like wi-fi you know like all these things are around us all this rays are around us the mahabhav and from her feet comes the concentrated emanation which which goes directly into the heart and what rasa it is it is the rasa of madanakya mahabhav which only the manjaris they can participate nobody else lalita will not feel the same emanation coming from the lotus feet of swamini vishaka will not feel the same yashoda will not feel the same you know kirtida and ananda and and and, and what is it what is the, the father of 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 swamini called um rishabanu rishabanu they will not feel the same emanation coming from the lotus feet but the manjaris will feel exactly what is in the heart of swamini because they are tadatmika they are so close to swamini and this is what what will happen this emanation it will enter into the hearts of those who are there so maybe gurudev can can share a little bit more on that if he if he gives us the mercy let's go there there is also the example in the material world when when it is said we should not touch the feet of someone who is not a god fearing person you know then you get the karma when you walk in the shoes of of people who are who are not on the spiritual path it is very inauspicious so that is also interesting because the opposite is true for the spiritual way when you touch the feet when you get the lotus the dust of the feet of the vaishnavas you are get the complete opposite result so what to speak of the lotus feet of swamini this is again something else you are right tarun baba yes uh, i heard from gurudev actually that all emotions from the heart all emotions of one person are coming down mm. to the feet to the lotus feet yes mm. Mm. And like you said, maybe we, we cannot see this energy, but we should feel that energy. Mm. And how mm. we should be sure that we received this mm. energy in our heart by noticing that somehow, little by little, we are changing. Mm. And we are changing our consciousness from material to the spiritual, more and less. So all feelings of spiritual person pure devotee and also here all feelings like you said of madanakya mahabhava topmost feelings of mahabhava and shrimati radharani are concentrating in this lotus feet and these feet are so soft but in the same time nothing can hurt them Yes, Guru Dev. I little share to you. Please. Please. Wow.
कृष्णा इज इन कुंजा राधा रानी टेक केयर बट राधा नेवर गो आउट फ्रॉम द कुंजा अदर प्लेसेस यू सी ही नेवर शी नेवर गो टू द मथुरा इज इन बट कृष्णा नेचर टू गो एवरीवेयर सो वॉट हैपन टू सर्व राधे राधा रानी थिंक टू हाउ टू सर्व कृष्णा फॉर सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा सी एक्सपेंडेड इन बहिरंगा शक्ति बिकॉज बहिरंगा शक्ति इज अनंग मंजरी नित्यानंद and this bahiranga shakti is why for the service for the krishna so this way where krishna is goes is all the all the creation he want to do every every item what is happening is in for the service of pleasure of the krishna and this is work of anang manjari this is the work of nityananda balram how you see it. this is to feel it so how to see to the scripture स्क्रिप्चर से राधा रस राधा कृपा कटाक्ष इज रिटन बाय शिवा राइट दैट इज मेंशन अनंत कोटि विष्णु लोक नाम पद्म जाते अनंत कोटि विष्णु लोक नॉट वन विष्णु लोक का अनंत कोटि अपार सिद्धि अंतरंगा शक्ति एक्सपेंड एज ए बहिरंगा शक्ति टू केयर एंड गिव द ऑलवेज केयरिंग केयरफुल एंड लविंग टू फॉर द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा सो यू सी All we have expanded, coming in the lineage of Anang Manjiri, and Taranga Sakti or Bhairanga Sakti. Yes. yes. In my sarup or if in my sadak deha, and Taranga or Bhairanga, and uh, all the time. we have to be in the service we do on the serve to his krishna anant koti okay, what is that anant koti vishnu vishnu lo are vishnu lo and where see their manjris are there Which Vishnu Loka we are born and with, are living is everywhere the Radhika's 
mercy is there. And it's all coming from the Sarpadanguli Nakke. What is the meaning of Sarpadanguli Nakke? The lotus feet, fingers, and in this finger from the nail coming. See ya. Or apart Siddhi, Siddhi is coming by her grace. Riddhi, Siddhi, all this is all by her grace from the nail of the Radhika. So this Antaranga Sakti, who is uh, serving in the Kunja, she expanded as a Bhairanga Sakti, Nitai and Antaranga Sakti is Nangmanji. And there, she is the teacher to check us, we are qualified or not for the uh, our sadhana of Rupanuga. Then she recommend us to some. Yes. Yes, Radhi Gurudev. Thank you for enlightening us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for enlightening us. Hoping that your words some day, some lifetime will shine in our hearts. Yeah. So Baba, Anandas, Baba Ji is written here, all coming from the lotus feet of Radhika. Means understand what is the, all the books. Sadhu, Sastra, Guru, Vakshi. What Sadhu say, Guru say, is you can see reference in the Sastra also. There is no outside. Sadhu, Sat, and Guru Vata. All this is same. But, but, yeah, but. How much you need? 20 of the warm ones and 20 thin ones. Huh? 20 of the warm ones and 20 of the thin ones. Take it out. Take out. She come to take it. Which? No, these are okay. There's no things. Take it out. All they have to give Oh, she is taking uh, Sorry, I misunderstood. The streams of cool nectar that come from Shrimati's lotus feet also extinguish the burning fire of the conditioned souls that suffer from three kinds of material miseries. So this is also this is also a reference to Samsara Dava Nanali Daloka. So this uh, fire of material existence can only be extinguished by the mercy of Swamini's lotus feet. And here in this world for us, this means from her true representative, from uh, Sadhguru, who is, the, who is a true representative of Swamini, who is uh, her ambassador, you can say. So this burning fire, every morning we have to be, we were singing this, Samsara Dava, Nanalita Loka, so this burning fire of material existence can only be extinguished by the mercy of the lotus feet of Swamini. 
through our Gurudev in our Guru Parampara. This is the deep meaning of, of this uh, line here. Then Sripada calls Radhika Nava Preman Premanubhava Brahmad Brubhangi Lava Mohita Vrajamani. The slightest movements of her eyebrows that awaken new love can enchant the jewel of Raja. The jewel of Raja can steal the hearts of millions of Raja gopis. But even the slightest movement of Radhika's eyebrows can capture him. It's very clearly how Radhika's movement of the eyebrow can capture Mohan's heart. And this is one of her beautiful ornament of her love. This dancing eyebrows are manifestation of Radharani's love and all emotions which are like waves appear in all her existence. Her dancing eyebrows are shooting the arrows of her emotions to stimulate even more the emotions of her beloved. So this is one of kind of ornament and Radhika is expressing her love through the movements of these eyebrows. And those devotees who are very attached to Radharani and very close to Radhika and her maid servants, they can notice that. And or even if they don't notice that when they hear about that, they will notice them and they will relish this description how Radhika's eyebrow is biding Mohan so powerfully that he cannot move even one millimeter. Yashoda can run and run and run around this mortar to try to capture him. And she is sweating in her attempts to bind him. But Radhika, when she just shoot the short, sharp arrow from her eyebrows, from the corners of the eyes, Radha Kripa Kataksha. Mohan is immediately stunned and very often fainted because of that shoot of her beautiful bluish eyes. So. And it's very nice, it said, these movements of the eyes, they awaken new love. Everything is Vrindavan is new. New Vrindavan is always new, Nava. Meeting between Radha and Mohan is always new. Emotions are always new. We think that it's the same emotions, but actually not. Each second, let's say second, these emotions are changing and becoming more and more intense. So this is the beauty of Vrindavan. Because everyone is under the 
influence of strong, passionate love, which brings this feeling of fresh and new in relationships. And this is why these lilas are so magical when we are listening about them, so attractive. They have some maybe basic structure which is revealed to us. But deep inside of the meaning are hidden different kinds of feelings. And they are just appearing in the appearing in the heart of devotee, sensitive devotee. So by meditation or radicals eyes, movements of the eyebrows, so many amazing things can appear in the life of devotee. And he can relish according to Radhika's desire. And it's said here, maybe Tarunji, you can, the jewel of Raja can steal the hearts of millions of Raja gopis. But even the slightest move of Radhika's eyebrows can capture him. He is finished. <laughs> he is conquered. And he likes to be conquered. This is the beauty of Krishna which we want to worship. We want Krishna who is conquered by the love of Shimate Radharan. No other Krishna. Oftentimes it's said that these crooked sidelong glances are more attractive to him than actually being together with her very intimately. So he, he, Rasaraj, Krishna, he enjoys this, you know, this temp, what, how, how can I say, this provocation, you know, this, 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 you know, this flirtations and this uh, side, crooked sidelong glances. Can I be with her? Can I not be with her? Will she accept me? Will she not accept me? Is she in man? Is she not in man? So this is so much excitement for 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 Mohan that that this is sometimes even more praiseworthy for him than actual uh, direct contact with her because he experiences much more bliss in this uh, in this strange atmosphere where he is not sure if she will be there for him. So this is what this is what all comes to you know the uh, that Radhika's existence is only there like Gurudev just said to serve the Lord and to serve Krishna with all her being, with all her existence. So we, 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 we catch two flies with one, with one stone. We, we serve Swamini all the time. So automatically the Lord of Swamini is pleased. So we are in the best position because we serve Swamini automatically. The blessing is there that we also satisfy, satisfy Krishna. That is, that is wonderful. Now Krishna, with his own words, are confirming. Rasamay will read from Rupa Goswami's Lalita Madhava. With his own words, if we don't believe in his own words, then <laughs> to whom we will believe? <laughs> so Krishna please, tells to Radhika in Lalita to Radhika. Madhava, "Oh, restless-eyed girl." There may be many girls in the world with beautiful eyebrows who can expertly play archery with their glances, revealing different moods. But just as the moon that may be surrounded by many beautiful stars at night, cannot stay before the powerful sun in the month of June. Similarly, no other girl but you can remain in my heart. Mm. Jai, it's Jai, so Shibar. It's so Sometimes we are comparing Radhika with the moon, and now we can see here how Krishna is comparing her with the sun. And he is saying, no moon with so millions and mil billions of 
stars around which are so bright can survive when just sun appears. What's the sun? And this sun, this sun is actually Radharani's Madanakya Mahabhav. And he is saying, not ordinary sun during the whole year, but the sun in the June. I suppose that actually is the most strongest sun in the June. So he is praising Shimati Radharani. He is glorifying and he is saying, and no other girl can remain in my heart when you appear. When I come to you. So, so we should take the shelter of Krishna's words because he is dire directing us directly to Shimata Radharani. We should have a faith in his words that if she is most dear to him, so it means that we should take complete shelter of his beloved, without any doubt. In, in Brahma Bhakti Chandrika, Naratam Das Thakur is saying, Radhika Prayashi Bhara Bhama Dik Manohara Kanaka Keshara Karati Dhare Anuraga Rakta Sari Nila Pata Manohari Mani Maya Aparana Pare. And Baba is quoting this like Sri Radhika is Sri Krishna's dearest sweetheart. And Baba is saying in the commentary on the Priti Sakera Dunhu Bandhu segment of the previous verse, it was said that without Srimadhi Radhika, Sri Krishna is unable to find joy even in the company of countless gopis. So just I was just Govinda Bhia was just reading this this morning. The verse is called uh, Sri Krishna's favorite is Radhika. So then Baba explains why Radhika is the favorite because she is the only possessor of this wonderful wonderful Madanakya Mahabhav, and this is logical because it's his Ladini Shakti. So only Ladini Shakti can attract Manohar, can attract the mind of Mohan. So therefore, only she can really to the utmost satisfy the Lord. No one else can do it like that. And therefore, Krishna left the Rasa dance. You know, this is all culminating in this expression that only she is the crest jewel of all Krishna's sweethearts, millions and millions. I mean, here in the material world, we are baffled, you know, like millions and millions and millions of girls are there for one man, you know. But Krishna in the spiritual world, millions and millions and millions of super excellent gopis are there. But his crest jewel is only one. And this is Madanakya Mahabhav Radhika. This is so enchanting. I was just, sorry, I was just reading that, thinking about this verse of, the, of this Chris crest jewel. All the Acharyas are always pointing their fingers to Ladini Shakti Mahabhav, Madanakya Mahabhav that Swamini possesses. And we are in this fortune that we all sit together here on this beautiful day and meditate about Swamini. I just want to share also one thing that Sometimes it, it is really beautiful if you want to please Swamini on this uh, day of Radhashtami. It is wonderful if you go before her picture or deity and sing a song about Krishna. There are like three really nice songs you can sing to please Swamini. This would be, you know, Namami Nandanandanam is one, Krishna Deva Bhavandam One Day is one, and Madhuram Madhuram, this beautiful song, these three songs are extremely pleasing to Swamini and you do a very nice seva. If you like, the Manjuris always have this uh, task to remind Swamini 
of her lover. So if we go into our Bhajan Kutir and if we go in front of our deities and in front of Radhika, if we sing such a song, she's very, very pleased. I just wanted to, to share this, that of course we sing a song, we, we can sing Radhika has to come and we can sing, you know, all songs about Radhika, but she's very, very pleased if we sing to her a song about her lover. So this was, I like this very much. <laughs> Thank you, Babaji. Thank you, Baba. So please. Um, Krishna means to say that Radhika, who is compared to the sun in June here, has much more influence on him than Chandravali, who is compared to the moon, as Chandra means moon. Srimati is the only wish-yielding gem of the devotees and is constantly playing in their hearts. The word Eka means that she throws all other thoughts but her out of her devotees' minds. The word Ekka also means that the Gaudiya Vaishnavas primarily think of Sri Radha and secondly of Sri Krishna, the Sakis, the Vrajavasis and so on. Simply by thinking of Sri Radhika, love of Krishna is attained. She is the Ramani Chudamani, the crown jewel of women. Srimad Bhagavat states, Simply by hearing his name, all the women become attracted to Krishna. But Radhika, attracts that same Krishna with the slightest movement of her eyebrows. And that is why she is Ramani Chudamani. Sripada says, May that Radhika appear on the outskirts of Rindavana's kunjas. It's the end of the verse 71. Try Repeat the verse. The crown jewel of women who enchants the jewel of Raja, Krishna, with even the slightest love awakening movement of her eyebrows, who is the only wish-yielding touchstone for her devotees, who is like a gem from which a stream of nectarian, very blissful love rasa flows, and whose effulgence outshines millions of lightning winds, appears on the outskirts of the Kunjas of Vrindavana. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Wow, okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we should go, Croatian devotees, they ha we have a program in two three hours in Rijeka, so we should. Uh, <laughs> I come too. I come too, brother. Okay, thank <laughs> that you. That would much. be that would be wonderful. Yes, we will be all together. No problem. So I'm sorry. We should make a little shorter today, so that many devotees also they are cooking their homes and. Uh, 
we have a program at 5 30 and uh, everyone has to come and prepare so again happy radashtami and all the blessings for attaining from our gurudev we need mercy from all vaishnavas to take to attain our desirable goal to become eka baba is saying here to become eka a kanta a kanta bhakta one point it's devotee so radhe radhe gurudev hey, jai radhe radhe